We're noting with the storm right now is that it is moving over the loop current. That's that uh, area in the southern kind of southeastern Gulf of Mexico of extremely warm, deep water. Now, overall surface temperatures around the Gulf of Mexico are in the 80s, so it's enough to support the hurricane force strength and even some additional strengthening. But where it is right now is more indicative of areas in the Gulf where you kind of see storms explode in strength. So 80 mile an hour winds, if that's the biggest explosion in strength that we could see from this, that I'd be fine with that. Again, it is moving so fast. One, it doesn't have a whole lot of time to strengthen and two storms that are moving this fast tend to almost rip themselves apart or at least prevent that inner core from really getting better and better developed. So that is some good news with such a fast moving storm. Another potentially good or um, uh, positive on that is with it moving so fast, any inundation wherever it makes landfall is not going to last for very long. It'll move in and out and we'll be done with it. And as a matter of fact, we've been talking about kind of our seven day forecast this weekend. Overall, it's not looking terrible. Early on today, we'll be fine. We'll start to get those tropical storm force winds by midday. Rainfall moving in probably after the noon hour, one to two o'clock. It'll be bands. It's not going to be just a rain shield moving over the area. And then as we get into Sunday morning daybreak, Things around here should really start to improve very quickly, and we've actually got some sunshine in the forecast coming up for Sunday. But again, the very latest at 4 a.m., and again, we're just getting those numbers in here, so our, uh, uh, our little bug down at the uh, bottom of the screen, that is not correct. We've got to update that because this information is just coming in. So this is the latest. Winds of 80 miles an hour now, so it is a strong Category 1 hurricane. Motion north-northwest, and this has just been incredible 22 miles an hour. You do not see storms in the Gulf of Mexico moving at a forward speed like that. So here is the forecasted track by one o'clock this afternoon. We have winds of 85 miles an hour. What the hurricane center is going with right now. So we easily they're going with the category one hurricane making landfall. We could easily see this maybe jump that threshold to become a category two would not surprise me to see this strengthen even more. Again, one thing in our favor is it is moving so quickly. It tends not to support rapidly intensifying hurricanes now by about seven, eight, nine o'clock tonight. Again, somewhere in that time frame, you've got the storm moving very near the mouth of the river. And again, the worst side of the storm is the eastern side. This keeps most of southeast Louisiana on the drier side and not not the better. Well, it is the better side, but not that we're not going to see any type of hurricane or tropical storm force conditions because we will. But it does keep the worst part of the storm and also some of the heaviest rain on more of the eastern side. Then as we continue on throughout the early morning hour, Sunday at 1 a.m., just starting to make landfall in either southern Mississippi or southern Alabama, perhaps right around the state line and then quickly continuing up to the north by Sunday afternoon. By tomorrow afternoon, the center of Nate is all already in northern Alabama and quickly moving into the Tennessee River Valley. So this is going to be a very fast moving storm will continue to be a very fast moving storm. So let's kind of go over what's been happening. A lot of the computer models, we kind of saw two little clusters, one favoring more southeast Louisiana, but even this is still more uh, coastal or lower Plaquemines Parish, coastal St. Bernard, so the Biloxi Marsh and then Mississippi. You only have a few outliers that are a little bit more to the west, but what's interesting is that the Hurricane Center did go a little bit more east, so kind of favoring this little cluster of models, which are actually the older model runs, the newer model runs. We're taking the storm a little bit more west, so Dave and I were discussing that this morning. We thought, oh, surely they're going to shift a little bit closer to us, but lo and behold, they shifted a little bit more to the east. We'll take it. Well, again, we don't wish this upon anyone, but for our viewers and for the folks watching us right now, we kind of want this to stay away from us. Again, another positive is that this is a very small storm. Wind field does not extend very far away from the center. So the tropical storm force winds are not too far away from the center. And again, most of them are going to be on the eastern side of the storm. Hurricane force winds are basically going to be right around the center. You're not going to see those spread out very far from the center of circulation at all. Now look at this as we get into the early morning hours, once it starts making its second uh, potentially first landfall. Actually, I was saying second. That was when it looked like it might hit more toward Buras or Venice. Well, now Hurricane Center is saying now it's going to miss the mouth of the river and make its first and hopefully only landfall along the Mississippi coastline. But notice those hurricane force winds actually extend across Mississippi and even toward Mobile County. So 
A lot of the little barrier islands there toward Dauphin Island, certainly tropical storm force winds, but maybe even near hurricane force winds. This keeps a lot of the New Orleans metropolitan area and most of our viewing area in southeast Louisiana out of some of the strongest winds. Now, certainly we could see some winds gusting up to tropical storm force, but it looks like any of the sustained winds of 40 miles an hour or greater will probably stay away from us. However, coastal locations, so much of St. Bernard, Lower Plaquemines Parish, as well as maybe towards Slidell, Pearl River, and certainly the Mississippi coast, will see some of those tropical storm force winds. Here's what the winds are doing right now. Speaking of that, winds very strong out of the east. Our buoys reporting a 31 mile an hour wind that south of the mouth of the river and then just east of the mouth of the river 22 and 27 mile per hour winds. These winds piling up the water right now and again we're going to start to see a little bit more of a surge as we get later into the day today. Again if there's any positive with the fast moving storm we're going to quickly see those winds shift direction and we'll start to see that water level drop fairly rapidly, but it's going to take a little bit of time. Inland winds have not been very strong. You get a little bit of a breeze right now, but winds have generally been on the south shore running at about 12 miles an hour. Had a couple of early morning gusts. Some showers on radar. These are not associated with uh, Nate. These showers are actually associated with an upper level low, which is scooting off to our uh, staying down to our south, but scooting off to the west. So we've got a few showers that are moving in. So for folks along the coastal communities, these showers that are moving toward us, not associated with Nate. Nate's rainfall is much farther south. Just kind of a bigger picture of Nate itself. Good outflow. In other words, in the upper atmosphere, there is nothing hindering any further development. And that's why it wasn't a surprise to see the winds extend or uh, the wind strengthen a bit to now 80 miles an hour. And it wouldn't be a big surprise to see maybe additional strengthening as the storm continues to move northward. Still a very, again, compact storm itself, and the wind field is not very substantial. Here's what's happening in the water vapor. You've actually got some dry air up to its north. Well, it's kind of pushing away from it but you have this upper low which has been kind of persistent that's now moving into mexico doesn't appear to be really uh, uh, doing much to the steering although with that motion out of the south that has been kind of helping to push nate northward doesn't look like the subtropical ridge out to the east is really influencing it at all and that may be why the hurricane center is kind of adjusted a little bit farther east the reason for that more westward trend a day or so ago was because it looked like the ridge was going to build in and kind of prevent nate from moving into it well it looks like nate is outrunning that subtropical ridge and by the time the ridge builds in nate will already be well inland and pushing north something else that may be kind of drawing nate northward See this upper trough right here? Tropical systems tend to follow weaknesses in the atmosphere, and it looks like it may be kind of doing that. And as that trough continues to push east, we might see a little bit of an influence, not only from the trough, but also from that developing ridge out to the west. So let's take a look at some of the computer models real quick. Here's the GFS model. Uh, this is kind of calling for really more of a landfall near the mouth of the river. And again, the Hurricane Center has shifted east, but this is still going with kind of a the lower Plaquemines Parish, maybe even a little bit farther north from Buras, and then kind of scooting along the Mississippi coast. Again, not a huge difference in the models, but because this is such a small storm, that precise location of landfall is kind of key as to who will experience some of the worst winds. Now, the Euro is much more over southeast Louisiana, and because of those model runs, that's why we thought maybe the Hurricane Center was thinking maybe they would shift it west, but it's actually kind of a big surprise that they did shift it east. Again, we'll take it right now. I'm not saying that that is the set in stone forecast because as we have seen, the track has kind of shifted one way or another. Not drastically shifted, but it has gone one way or another. And we'll likely see probably another shift as we get later on into this morning. Again, it's going to be a fast moving storm. So no matter who it hits, it is going to move in and out very, very quickly. This is our precision cast forecast model. This is based on the RPM model. And here it comes moving up to the north. Again, this model kind of favoring more near the lower part of Plaquemines Parish, maybe near Buras, kind of scooting along the Biloxi Marsh and more of a landfall perhaps just to the east or kind of between Bay St. Louis and Gulfport before moving northward. Model consensus seems to be more mouth of the river and central Mississippi coast before moving northward. Hurricane Center has kind of shifted their thinking a little bit more to the east, which 
again, that's great news for us. Just kind of quickly looking outside right now, we're at 80 degrees. We do have mostly cloudy skies. Temperatures around the area in the 70s and low 80s. And a quick look at our seven day forecast. Rainy today, that won't get started until probably the midday hours. And most of our rain and storms will be early in the day Sunday and then clearing out. We'll actually see some sunshine during the day. It looks like still a few showers may be developing on Monday. And at one time, it looked like we we're going to get a cold front and finally some October weather moving through. It looks like Nate is going to kind of keep that front away from us. So we'll stay kind of on the warm side, but relatively dry as we head into the rest of next week. But once we are done with Nate, our weather finally settles down. Chris, before you leave, uh, I had a mic issue in the beginning. I know yesterday, last night, we were talking about this 4 a.m. Uh, you know, a track being really critical, mm -hmm. but it was such a surprise to you and to Dave. Uh, do you think the 10 a.m. now becomes equally critical? Do you think it could shift yet again, or are we pretty confident this is the track and the path it's going to take? It, it'll be interesting to see. We'll get another um, model run of the GFS. Uh, the Euro, we won't get a new run until a little bit later on this afternoon. But as we get new model information, Hurricane Hunters have been flying this flight. We've already had one flight leaving and another flight actually coming in from Tampa that will be investigating the storm in the next several hours. So as we'll get more information, that data will be placed into computer models. They'll get run. We'll get new forecasted tracks from the models, and then the Hurricane Center will kind of look at their thinking from the models and then also what is currently happening. Kind of interesting that they did shift it more to the east, but wouldn't be surprised. Actually, just about every time we've seen a new track come out, they've shifted it one way or another. Again, it hasn't been drastic, but you know, in, for all intents and purposes, it's pretty accurate that it's going to be just clipping southeast Louisiana and the Mississippi coastline. Could be a little bit one way to the east, one way to the west by maybe a few or 50 miles, maybe even less than that in some of the uh, uh, changes. But relatively speaking, that's kind of the bullseye area. Again, farther to the east, because the storm is so small, the influences are basically right near the center. That's why this isn't a big storm where a little wobble 30 miles one way or another really doesn't matter. With large storms, kind of a wobble one way or another from the center is almost meaningless because everybody's going to experience the possibly hurricane force conditions, but we don't see that with this. Nate is such a small storm, it really will uh, dictate who gets some of those strongest winds because the storm is so, so small. And also key is that, as I was mentioning before, the worst of it is on the eastern side. So that is going to be uh, uh, the folks that get some of the heaviest rainfall and the strongest winds and obviously right near the center where your strongest winds are. But anybody to the east of that storm is going to get the worst. And again, the farther east it goes for southeast Louisiana, the better because that takes more of that wind feel away from us. All right, Chris, thank you very much.